the Pixel 3 is official, and I've already had some time to ponder my thoughts after my first look. I had some choice words regarding some of the controversial design choices, and I think you know which one I'm talking about. I am going to give my final thoughts in a review in my review format by asking the question, who is this for? But for now, I wanted to give some extra detail on a few of the points that I might make in that final review. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And let's talk a little bit more about the Pixel 3 XL before my final review. You want me to say it? I'll say it. This is the ugliest notch on a smartphone in a current climate that mostly hates the concept to begin with. It looks like a deer in headlights, a surprised emoji, or a weird robot which is kind of appropriate for artificial intelligence toting Google. If I could do away with the notch, I would. I never disagreed that it is unattractive, but that's why we have phones like the Galaxy Note 9 and a slew of phones actually coming out of China that are trying to find ways of getting a full screen experience without resorting to the dip in the display. If you feel so strongly about the notch, no one is stopping you from getting any of those other phones. That's supposed to be the joy of Android, choice. And here we are with Google creating a very polarizing smartphone, but you don't have to settle for having a notch. Clearly one of the points that will be in the who is this not for portion of my final review will be the notch hater. Now you may have seen in the past week that you can also turn off the notch by getting into the developer options and blacking out the top portion of the screen. It does a pretty good job of making that black bar because the OLED display terminates the pixels. All content gets shifted downward below all the bits that make up the notch, making a phone that has bigger overall bezels. They are more symmetrical, but they are bigger as a result. This is the interesting thing though. If you use the phone in this configuration, you get effectively a Pixel 2 XL, or more to the point, something more similar to the smaller Pixel 3 only scaled up. I agree that the smaller phone is better to hold and to handle, but once you turn on this developer option, what you get here is a larger version of the Pixel 3. The ratio of screen to bezel is still very similar. Now there is more that the Pixel line has done to signal change in Android smartphones, and in this year's models, the notch is only scratching the surface. Android Pie is a more radical shift, and I don't know if I'm truly into it even until now. You can certainly get used to it, but I can't help but think that Android 9 takes away from some of the smooth and cohesive choices that we've been able to get for the last few generations. I don't really like the jerky animation that the app drawer does when you're trying to slide up from the home button, and then you have to swipe again in order to make it fully come up. Swiping side to side for quick switching is good, but there's a bit of mind power required to remember if the recent app you want isn't too far down the list. And if you're wrong, now you have extra swipe up steps to do. Now, while some key additions are definitely welcome, it's kind of weird to say that some very fundamental muscle memory parts of the Android experience have changed. But thankfully, what is also fundamental to a Pixel experience is the camera, so I'll talk about that for a little bit. Uh, let me also mention that I have a vlog releasing at the same time as this video filmed entirely by the Pixel 3 with a wide moment lens and the new wide front lens. Now right now I find that the camera still provides a comparable level of quality as to the Pixel 2 XL, which I have happily used on a number of different occasions and trips. The main addition to the Pixel video experience is that wide front camera. I stand by my excitement over this wide-angle lens. We often see wide-angle put on the rear of a smartphone, but getting more people into your portraits and in your portrait mode does make a lot of sense. And of course, it also works in video recording. With the necessary attachments for the rear camera, getting to show more of your surroundings in general is just an absolute joy. Unfortunately, you still get the typical lower quality of a front-facing camera, and really, stabilization is sorely missed. Maybe in the future we'll get just one front-facing camera that is already really wide on its own, and then just crops in the photo if you want a more linear field of view. And also, that would eliminate the need for a large notch like what you have here. Now, at this point, I can share more of my photos from the Pixel 3, so make sure you get over to my Instagram as well, because I have been posting there quite a bit via the feed and also mainly on stories. High dynamic range shooting makes those less than ideal situations look decent. And then if you know exactly what you're going for, the results can be very dramatic as well. Detail is high, no matter which side a camera you use. And there is a good amount of contrast that is far and beyond the flatter photos from the iPhone XS Max. Now, some people like their photos to be a little less processed. So turning off HDR plus can lessen those effects. But then there's also the option of getting a RAW and JPEG capture done at the same time. So if you want to get fancy and import the raw DNG files into your favorite photo editing app, that's possible too. I'm pretty happy with what the camera of the Pixel 3 has done so far, even if it doesn't provide too much by way of options and modes, but there are a few new ones. Portrait mode gives a few new options, including a color pop that has proven to be a fun tool. And actually the panorama function has a new UI that is really slick. While in other smartphones, the camera can kind of break the overall experience, it's really only here that the camera can actually make the experience. The only phone that truly fits this description is the Pixel 3. 
There are sure to be many people out there who dislike one or maybe a lot of aspects of this phone, but many of those same users may find the flaws easy to look past because the camera experience is second to none. And that's honestly what I was alluding to in my first impressions video. The wide angle lens is an addition that I personally really enjoy and clearly I've been using it a lot, but I know that this overall camera makes this pixel stand out from the rest. So maybe we get a notch that we hate in this year's phones. Maybe we don't get the headphone jack now or possibly ever. And maybe Android Pie is changing for the weirder. If any of those aspects break the experience for you, then just try taking a few photos. And if that still doesn't do it for you, then at least there's plenty of Android to go around. Clearly, there are a ton of different opinions when it comes to the Pixel 3 right now. Uh, there are some people who had some really high hopes for this and then were kind of disappointed by certain aspects that Google decided to build in, and I totally get that. So I thought it would be good to try and cover all of the bases, be very thorough, and give my thoughts mainly on the two biggest aspects of this. Number one, the most controversial being the screen and that notch, and number two being the camera experience. So I wanted to share a little bit more of both of those before I went more general and talked about who this phone is for. Uh, from there, I'm going to go ahead and get into the uh, full review for this phone, among all the other phones that are coming out. Uh, you can check out the vlog that I did using this phone so you can see what the video quality truly is like. I'm really just missing OIS when I'm using the front-facing camera for video, but otherwise you can take a look at that and wait for the full review. And until then, I will remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.